Hello guys, it's Jade here and welcome back to my channel. In part two of our MSAL authentication with React, I am showing you how you would create a trusted relationship between a front-end application in Azure and a back-end application in Azure. What that requires us to do, it requires us to create two app registrations and create a trusted relationship between each one. And we do this by creating and exposing a scope on the API and then making that available on the front-end and access through the front end. So this is really important because we need this in order to be able to retrieve an access token from our front end for the API and also do that on behalf of the user and that means that we can then use that to then send to the API and get information about the user within the API and be able to do stuff with that user whilst also validating that user's identity. So without further ado, let's get into the video. So the first thing we need to do in order to create a like relationship between the front end and the back end of our application is to first create the front end and then create the back end. So we did create the front end in the previous video, but we're just gonna show you it again, just so that we have a quick refresher. It doesn't take that long. So I figured what's the harm in doing that? So I'm just gonna call it Edu Task Hub front end again. And then I'm just gonna, again, make sure that it returns localhost 573, which is our URL that it's going to connect to. And that's been created. And so that's pretty much what we did before. We didn't really do much, anything else. And I'm also gonna create the back end as well. And we don't need to create a redirect URI for the back end because we are only going to be actually logging in through the front end. And then what we're going to do is we're going to get a access token from the front end that it can call the back end so that we can access the back end. So there's a few things that we need to do in order to get that enabled. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to make sure that the back end is able to accept access tokens. And so the way that you make sure that the um, back end can access access tokens is you actually need to go into the manifest, which is a bit of a icky thing to do, but it's the only way you can currently do it. And in on line four, it says access token accepted version, which is currently null. But in order to make sure that it'll actually accept an access token, we need to say that this version is gonna be um, version number two. That's just the version that gets created by default. So that's the first thing we need to do. The second thing that we need to do in our app registration is we need to actually create a scope so that the front end can actually gain an access token for the API. So the way that you do that is you go into the section here called expose an API. And this basically is saying, okay, I'm gonna expose this application as an API. And that means that other applications can call my application. And so all we need to do here is we just need to add a application ID URI, which is basically, um, you can just set it as the client ID of the Edutasker backend if you want, but I quite like to make it like um, a name. So I like to, I'm just gonna call it Edutask Hub backend because that means that even if you decided to change your like client ID, if you decided to create a new app registration, as long as you have the same scope, you wouldn't need to worry about changing the application ID URI like in the actual code itself again, because it's gonna be the same, like no matter what app registration that you use, as long as you have this scope and application ID URI enabled. So that's just a little tip that I prefer to do rather than like putting the unique um, ID in there. Of course, you wouldn't be able to have like two of the same like edgy task for backends in there, you would have to have like one or the other. Like you wouldn't be able to add two to the same like front end application because then it would get confused. So you would only do that if you knew that this was gonna be a unique thing at one specific time. And so the next thing that we do is we then add a scope. So I'm just gonna add like um, a access as user scope for now so that we can show how you would access that. And then you can say, this is um, ability to access the backend API. Um, access 
Let's use our scope to edge your task up. And then we're just gonna give it that. I actually wanna give admins and users um, the ability to consent, but if you just want admins to be able to consent to it, that's also, that's also fine. Um, all this would mean is like if um, it was admin only, they would have to grant um, permissions in the portal to do that. And I can show you where you would do that. So I'm just gonna add that scope in now. And the final thing that we have to do on here is we have to say which of the front end applications are actually allowed to use this. So I need to go and get the actual client ID from my front end and I can get that here. And then I can also go back into here and I can then add the, if I go into my expose API, I can add the application client here and I can assign it this specific scope. So the interesting thing is you can add multiple scopes and multiple different clients can access this API through different scopes if you wanted to. So I'm just gonna add that um, here and now you've created the scope on the back end, but you actually still need to do one more thing. You have to actually say from the front end that we can access this, this client. So now we're gonna go back to the front end. So we go back to the app registrations and then we go to the front end and then we say, okay, well, I want to be able to get this um, scope. So we then need to go to API permissions. So the difference between exposing an API, that's saying, okay, I am giving you permissions to my API, to my client, to my um, app registration. Whereas when you are going to API permissions, you are saying, I want access to this thing instead. So this is about getting access rather than giving access. So in here is where you would then get access. So I can then say, okay, I'm gonna add a permission in here. And then I can go into APIs my organization uses, and I can search by my app um, registration for the back end. And it's here because I've added it here and I've configured my client ID and it is there ready for me to access. So all I need to do is now assign that scope to my application and I just need to specify delegate permissions. So you can make it configurable so that it is application permissions, but you would have to add app roles. That's a different thing that we would need to do. Let me know if that's something that you want to see, but at the moment we only have delegate permissions available. And that is all that is needed to um, give access to our, from our front end to our back end. The only thing that I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna grant um, admin consent for the default directory here. And the reason why I'm doing it here is because if not, then when I log in, then I'm gonna have to do it. Every single user is gonna have to give consent themselves. Whereas that if I, as a admin, give that consent like from me, then they don't need to do that. Next time we're going to be going through how to get like Python with fast API up and running and we're going to be using fast API Azure auth in order to do that. It's a really, really nice library. I've really enjoyed working with it in the past and it's really, really easy to get up and running with and get started with. I'm also going to be doing a example in .NET and in Node because no one could make their mind up on which one they wanted. So I decided why not do all three, just one after the other. And that's all from me. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. I post daily content on my LinkedIn and I'm trying, trying to post weekly content on my YouTube and on my blog. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.